Uh, good evening. Welcome to the February 7th, 2023 meeting of the Hatfield Select Board. Um, <clears throat> we'll call the meeting to order and as usual, we'll open by reading the our public participation policy. The Hatfield Select Board welcomes everyone to its meetings and all other public meetings of the town of Hatfield. All regular <clears throat> and special meetings of the boards and <coughs> committees of the town of Hatfield shall be open to the public. Do you want to read this for me? Nope. <coughs> yeah, I have water. Sorry. It's shall be open to the public and shall conform to the open meeting law. XX discussions <coughs> are closed to the public and will be held only as prescribed by the statutes of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It is important to recognize that the open meeting law affords the opportunity to listen to the proceedings but not necessarily <laughs> participate. During meetings of the select board, an attempt will be made to find a balance between hearing from members of the community and conducting the required business of the Hatfield Select Board. <coughs> Thank you, sir. I am not sick. I have a dry throat from the heat. Um, anybody have any announcements? No, N none for me. Thank you. <coughs> Is anyone here for public forum? Lydia, come on up. Since I'm not a member of the Board of Selectmen, the only way to make an announcement is to come to public forum. So as a town clerk, I just wanted to let everybody know there are open positions um, for office this year, um, one of them being the town clerk's office because I'm retiring. Um, so I, anyone, I just wanted to put out there, anyone that is interested or thinks, you know, they might be interested, please, you know, con feel free to contact my office. I'd be happy to have somebody, you know, come in, show them what we do, just show them around, um, just so they can, you know, get a feel for what it is they'd be getting into. So I just wanted to make that announcement um, mm. as the town clerk. Well, <clears throat> first of all, thank you for your years of service. Congrats on this decision. My God. <laughs> Good for you. Um, you know, we'll certainly miss you. Yeah, it, it, you know. Yeah, it's been 10 I years think town here. Clerk but would be such a great job. It it is. Mm -hmm. It is. It's just, you know, you know when you've gotten to that point where it's too much. It, you know, <coughs> I'll be 67, you know. It, not that you have to ask, but I'll volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's my second career. I've done 10 years right. here. I did 38 years in a law office, right. and I've been working since I was 12 years old. I'm, you know, so, yeah. But so to, it, just it's to time. elaborate on what you're saying and, and just sort of go further on what I'm saying, the job of town clerk, to me, seems like it would be fascinating. So you're handling elections, vital records. Dog licenses, fishing licenses. There's a lot of things. Um, I I absolutely love it. I'm just getting too old to <laughs> to do the job properly. But I, yeah, there are many aspects of it. Even the elections, as crazy as those are, it's like putting a party together, you know. And it's, you know, those same kind of feels and and stuff. And yeah. but yeah, they you know things are just keeping changing, and as you get older, your processor slows down. And to be honest, my processor <laughs> is slow is slowing down. So you know you you know you know yeah when it's when it's time. So. Well, certainly <clears throat> that's a kind offer to you know speak to anybody who might be interested. Oh yeah, and it's <clears throat> it's like I said, I'm I'm retiring. I'm hopefully not dying, and you know so I'm just, <laughs> yeah. I'll be. Oh I'll be around. I'll be around, so I can, you know, certainly help the next person that comes. Oh my uh, goodness! Along. Was there ever any thought given to this being an appointment appointed position? Because it seems to me like that would actually that, make some. You know, sense. it, it, it may it may that. come to that. My theory on that, and no offense to the, to the board, is that the town clerk is one of the last elected officials that can stand toe to toe with a select board. Um. Once the position is put under the select board as an appointed position, and I hear this from appointed clerks all the time, they will try to pass more and more work onto the town clerk that is not necessarily town clerk, you know, business. So they get, you know, they get pressured, they get, you know, 
you know, well, so, but, you know, and if uh, if someone, a citizen comes to the town clerk's office, the town clerk is helping that person, you know, with whatever they need to do to go before the board or whatever. So there's a lot of things that, yeah, I know, like I said, no offense, but it's one of the last positions that, you know, mm. can stand, stands equal with the, with the selectmen. So it's a good point. Um, okay. <clears throat> and <coughs> what, I have one more thing, and, and this is not as a town clerk. This is as Lydia Zish of 449 Main Street. I think windows on the other side of the center school is a great idea. <laughs> I am a very symmetrical person, and it just seems like the right thing to do, and all it does is add value to the property, which adds to the tax base. <coughs> Thank you. Congratulations, Lydia. Yeah, yeah. congratulations. Um, you have one more election to get through. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> um, anyone else for public forum? We have quite a crowd here tonight. Um, okay, so then I'll move on to approval of minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the October 26, 2022 minutes. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll make a motion to approve the January 24th, 2023 minutes. Second. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? No, ma'am. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Our first item of um, posted business, and I'm happy to say I'm over my little coughing fit, um, is to, um, we have uh, resident Mickey Sanderson here um, <clears throat> to address the use of engine brakes. <clears throat> from trucks traveling Elm Street and Maple Street. Mickey, did you want to come up to the um, <clears throat> microphone or hot seat or whatever it's, you want to call it? It's kind of both. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, thank you to the board and, and Marlene uh, for the opportunity to speak to this and <coughs> proposal that I think is in your, your package today. Mm -hmm. um, I come here as a citizen first, um, but also as a realtor um, to um, put forth a uh, compression release engine brake prohibition, except an emergency for all of Hatfield. Um, the use of these brakes, uh, particularly in certain sections where there is a slight downgrade or, or has become probably a burden to the people that hear this. Um, and I'm not just talking about four o'clock in the afternoon, but 4.30 a.m. when they're trying to navigate um, uh, corners and, as I said, slight downhills. Um, <clears throat> as a community member, I think that it's important for people to step up and say that we need to preserve the well-being and the quiet enjoyment of our homes and our properties. And especially in this case when, uh, from the research I've done and the, the experts I've spoken with, um, engine brakes are quite not needed uh, in most circumstances. In the proposal I wrote, um, it is important to know that they uh, typically are not used on flat or low grade or uphill roadways, certainly not an unloaded or lightly loaded vehicles, and certainly not to compensate for excessive speed or insufficient braking distances as a result of improper operation. And that last sentence is probably where we're seeing most of the use in town. And I hope I'm here representing uh, a lot of people in town. And I wanna say not just perhaps on Elm and Maple, but also Maine and other spots in town where this is occurring. I just can't um, speak to that anecdotally because I don't live there. <laughs> but I can tell you that there are mornings I am woken up at four o'clock, 4.30 in the morning from engine brake use. And it's not only the noise, but it's the vibration. And uh, as a realtor, <laughs> I can speak to that. Uh, I represented uh, a property at 15 Elm Street um, just several months ago. And uh, it was a concern of the seller that this would be a problem in selling their property, um, the noise of the trucks and the speed of the trucks going down toward the VFW hall as they start to break. They actually had, uh, there's a certain type of, type of insert you can put on your windows it's a kind of an interior storm window, if, if you would. Um, they never could open up their front windows, uh, particularly in the summer months. And they always had these storm windows on their front, on their front of the front of the house. Uh, at 8 Elm Street across the street, I'm sure you remember who, who lived there. 
Uh, one of the reasons they did move was because of noisy truck traffic. So as a realtor, I'm here to protect property values of the people in town, including myself, including other, other property I represent in town, <laughs> and make sure that the quiet rural community we have and we possess and we're so lucky to have continues to be that quiet, lovely rural experience that people want to have. Um, I don't think there's much more I have to say. Um, I think it's a, a reasonable request. Uh, it does not hurt or harm any entity. Uh, the truck traffic, particularly the, the larger trucks um, who use these, and by the way, I do want to say it is not our farming vehicles. It's not our tractors. Um, I very much respect and honor those who are doing the agricultural business in town. Uh, the entities that come from out of town who are using these brakes, um, that is my focus and the focus of other neighbors of mine mm. who I've spoken with. Can, over I, the can I ask a question? Certainly. I mean, when I first heard of this, yep. I was trying to analyze why would somebody put on emergency brakes? Is it because they are not aware that they're coming up to that short corner? And, and, is, and if they're not aware they're coming up to the cor corner, why is that? So I did take a ride to look at signage. Yeah. And the signage isn't really that clear of where that corner is. So if you're a trucker coming out from Virginia, just in my mind, and you're coming through there, you may not be aware of that corner or when to slow down. So if, if the bylaw was to go through, I would think that there'd be more of an issue of trying to fix the problem by having better signage somehow to make the truck slow down at an earlier yes. location and then to make the signage to be legal with DOT, Correct. maybe we should be investigating what type of signage is allowed that's aesthetically pleasing to the neighborhood mm -hmm. along with what would help the truckers slow down that's coming from out of state right. or out of town. So I would suggest we contact DPW director to, to contact somebody with the Department of transportation that's familiar with signs to see what might they've done in the past in other areas to help truckers slow down so that they don't have to put on emergency brake. That's just my thinking when I'm hearing about this. Yeah, the, so the solutions that I put in the proposal, uh, the number one is that the select board formally contact all commercial trucking companies in the town of Hatfield and request the discontinued use of engine brakes in all public roadways. So I think right off the bat, without having it be any kind of adversarial um, request, you're, you're, we're just kind of saying, tell your truckers. I, there's communications that happen, um, that this is happening. I, the number two is that the DPW be charged with placing signage where appropriate, notifying, notifying those who use the roadways that this use is prohibited. Um, and then the third one that, that the chief can speak to is that the town of Hatfield police be some kind of enforcement, uh, have some kind of enforcement. Um, don't know what that is. That's kind of out of my pur pur uh, purview, but um, I agree with you. Uh, signage is important, but I will have to say that there is a decrease in, right in front of my house. It goes from 40 to 25, and I would hope that they're seeing that on whatever computer or GPS they have. I know it can happen immediately, as the chief did tell me, um, but I think with some advanced communication with signage, perhaps right off of Route 91 before they even enter the town of Hatfield, that this is a no engine break. Um, zone. Um, of note, the city of Northampton has these signs all over the town, all over the city. And um, mm. it certainly does say, unless, uh, unless it's an emergency. And I have uh, a little footnote at the bottom that it's understood that compression re release engine brakes <coughs> can be an important accessory component for emergency situations. Certainly that's, that's outside of what I'm proposing. Um, but the, the signs are there. It's not like we're reinventing the wheel. A lot of municipalities have I'm not that. sure if the signs are really clear because I I rode through there today a couple of times yeah. noticing one sign and I'm saying, well, if you're not really thinking, unless the sign's sort of like flashing from a maybe a flashing type of sign located yeah. aesthetically mm -hmm. that would indicate to make get your attention from somebody that's never been in the town because most of your other trucks that are around here know the corner, Correct. know to slow down. Yes. There's no doubt we're dealing with trucks from Virginia, uh, Iowa, the like. I understand uh, that. I don't think that can be an excuse, though, for not trying to rectify this situation. 
Agreed. And so what I'm what I'm saying is I, I think a three pronged approach. I actually think number one of my solutions of the solution would probably rectify a lot of this. Uh, just just I think it's it's uh, and 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 to be the the companies that have these trucks rolling through town are actually citizens themselves. They live here. And so it's it's in their best interest to have the town roads be safe and also to have there is some speeding, uh, not have the truckers need those brakes to to amplify or exhilarate their 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 braking as they're going through town. And I think it's a reasonable request. And I think it's a request that other municipalities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts have made and been and been granted as long as it's legal, as long as it's safe for the truckers to operate. I don't think it then should be that the citizens of Hatfield um, kind of take a hit in the quiet enjoyment of their properties. <clears throat> Mike, did you want you did you want to speak to this? Because there is some Legality components issues. in here of enforcement and I'm First of all, this is uh, it, this is news to me. <laughs> like that, we went from never hearing about these breaks to wanting to put this big policy in place. I mean, I lived on Elm Street. I don't remember there being a chronic problem with it. If you lived it. in Elm Street before the hill by the VFW, you may not have heard this. I you, mean, the you legion. probably had speeding, maybe some downshifting, whatever. But the hill at the VFW before you rev up to Prospect is a big deal. The corner at at uh, you know Maple to Maine is a pretty big deal, both directions. And I've heard that other parts of town experience the same thing. Uh, truly, we have flat roadways in most of towns. Probably they're not needing or trying to use uh, Jake brakes or these uh, the engine brakes, as they're also called. Um, but there are specific areas in town that it really has had an impact. And I'd have to say, if I'm woken up at 4.30 in the morning because of a Jake brake situation, and it's actually vibrating my house it has to be happening to all my neighbors in that corner. I hear it. Um, they actually do it on 91 a lot, oh, yeah, which ma doesn't make much sense to me because it's flat. Exactly. But where my house is, when the windows are open, we can hear it on 91. Yeah. You know, but. Well, things we can't control there. But Mike, did you? Well, is that why everybody's here? <laughs> yes. Wow. Um, I, I, I actually agree with the residents. Um, when it comes to the unnecessary use of these of these devices, um, because they're really not needed um, in any of these areas, um, they, these trucks have brakes. They don't need to use these emergency engine brakes, which is exactly what they are. With that being said, that's also the problem: is that they're pieces of emergency equipment. Right. This is. This has come up in town before. This came up maybe five years ago. This came up in town. Um, and this has come up in communities all over the state. Um, they've tried banning them. Uh, the legislature got nowhere with that uh, several years ago because they're, they're an emergency component. Um, the question for me or the question for us is what can we do legally to help rectify this problem? So in, in uh, Mickey's uh, solutions here, you know, part of that is for you guys to decide. When it comes to the police department, it really comes down to what we can legally do and not do. Yeah. So you can't ban safety equipment. Right. Um, it's just not something you can do. Um, I'm not even sure you can regulate it to a point where we have <coughs> some teeth where we can write fines for it. See what I mean? Because it'd be impossible to prove. You know, oh well, you know, a rabbit or whatever, a squirrel ran out in front of me. I can't, you know what I mean? So what constitutes what constitutes an emergency to that driver where he's using this this piece of safety equipment? So it becomes near impossible to enforce. I suspect Northampton and other communities have are doing what we're doing here tonight, which is put up some signs and um, hopefully that works and you know, um, and uh, go that route. So, is that going to solve the problem or fix the problem? I don't know. I I really don't know. I I would suggest whatever we do, we check with legal counsel to see what we actually can do or not. Yeah, I I just Sorry. wanted to yeah. add it's it's the word prohibition. The, 
I mean, it is a piece of, it is a safety. I, I know you're saying except in emergencies, but it is a piece of safety equipment that's yep. on the truck for a reason. So go ahead. Well, I, first off, Mickey, thanks for the information. Thanks, yeah. thanks Chief. Um, so solution number one, just to reiterate for people, uh, the select board formally contact all commercial trucking companies in the town of Hatfield and re request mm -hmm. the discontinued use of engine brakes on all public roadways. I think a carefully, and we can check with town council first if mm -hmm. that seems to be the wisest thing. Mm -hmm. But I think at a minimum, that can be done because you're, we're, we're discouraging it, you know, unless it's an emergency, right? We have, we have to word it if we're going to mm -hmm. send something out mm -hmm. appropriately. Um, it, you know, I, I think we could, I believe we could certainly do at least that to start. And then when it comes to signage, um, if we're going to try to enforce something, I think that's a little different to Mike's point where I think at that point, we, we definitely would have to see what, what powers do not, not just the board, but the town, right? It might need something that has to get voted on, mm -hmm. um, to, to do something like this, uh, Shifting gears just a little, I think that years ago, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't know if, if Mike can talk to this, you know, that whole 40 to 25 mm -hmm. change, at least when, as you're going by my house heading to, you know, from Elm to Maple and then the corner, that was discussed at length. Like, I think I was just on the board, so nine years ago, eight or nine years ago, and it had to do with how, how many residents and what's the distance, you know, because... Mm -hmm. My neighbor at the time was like, hey, can't we just change it once you hit the bridge? In near the, once you're near the Legion, can't you just drop it to like 25 starting there? Which mm -hmm. if we could, and, but there was a reason that we couldn't. It had to do with yeah, they're state, very regulated. state regulated, whatever it's worked on. But so I, I think it's, I, I actually like your solutions, the proposals for the solutions. But I, I think the first one we could certainly do is in fact number one. Mm -hmm. which would be send a letter asking the businesses, hey, can you remind your truck drivers yep. that this is residential neighborhoods, unless it's an emergency, they should refrain from using you know, the brakes. And it so sounds Mike's, like you're saying that a lot of it is out of town trucks. I can only speak anecdotally, the license place that I happen to catch as right. they, they go by. But they're it, heading it's, to it's, a local place or they right. wouldn't be here. Yeah, it's a, right. they're so. heading to, uh, you know, yeah. our, our local, you know, commercial enterprises, right. which I hugely support. Um, it's just, a, it's kind of a common sense thing. And, and you know, perhaps these, I don't know, I'm not going to extrapolate what their, you know, time schedules are or whatever, right. but it shouldn't, as I said, be a detriment to the people that are actually living on the residential streets. Right. And across the board in Massachusetts, the, the places where these signs are placed and these um, uh, rules are put into effect are actually residential neighborhoods. Yeah. And in Hatfield, we have secondary streets primarily as our neighborhoods. Right. Uh, we have very few you know, little in-cuts of, of, so we do live here. It, these are the roads where people live um, in our in our small and beautiful community. Um, and I, I just, again, will, would reiterate, I don't think it's an unreasonable request. And I think that the, the letters to the people that are here, that live here and, and do work here, will go a long way uh, because it does affect them as well. It affects their values of their mm -hmm. properties all over town. So I do think that number one, the solution would go a long way. And if we have to then go further into solution number two, which would be signage, um, it, it's been done, and there there have been bridges crossed uh, legally, uh, particularly in the city of Northampton, right next door. Um, that they've they've come up with signage that evidently, to Ed's point, um, does meet the criteria of something that's legal, and something that um, you know keeps the community safe. But in the same regard, it doesn't diminish the community. That's yeah, we still need to check with the council, of course, <laughs> before we do it here. Of course. But, <clears throat> Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mickey. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you, everyone else, for coming in. Yep. Did anyone else want to speak to it? Well, Do you want to come up to the microphone? You know, I'm really probably not speaking to that issue, actually. But we do live on Main Street. We live at 14 Main Street and, and Benedict and Gerard Peckham. And, um, you know, I think if I had known that trucks were going to be coming down Main Street at three and four and two and three and four in the morning, and it's not just the brakes, it's the noise and the fumes. 
you know, diesel fumes. Like if you have your window open at night, you sleep. Our bedroom is right, you know, near the main street. And it's really bothers, terribly bothersome. So um, I just wanted to add on to that. That's a, you know, it's, it's the, the, uh, the brakes plus noise in general from semi trucks and the fumes they emit are really bad. <clears throat> Thank you. I, w I would imagine also that once the corner's made, going one way or the other, af after the fast deceleration, then you There's have the then you have the quick acceleration. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, yes. so you might get the brakes and you might get the acceleration on your, you know, and vice versa. But that's the yeah. So if it, so if it was all more of a steady speed all along, it would be less noticeable, less irritating. Um, I would imagine. Thank you for your input. Anyone else? Okay. So we'll work on we'll a letter. Follow up with council, yep. And follow we'll up. We'll keep you posted, mm -hmm. Mickey. Yeah. Man, as well. Okay. And thanks for coming in. Um, so the second topic tonight is um, we're joined by Barry Roberts from the Center School Condominiums Building. Barry, did you want to come up to the microphone? Thank you for being willing to hear my request. Mm -hmm. uh, with me is Don Southwick, my partner in uh, the school renovation. Uh, <coughs> as you know, we've gone through a long process to get this building done. We are 99.9% .9 done. Uh, we have sold units. And the reason that I come here tonight is the purchaser of unit number five, which is on the second floor of the south end of the building, uh, would like to put windows in that are the same as on the north end of the building. I could never figure out why when they built this school, you know, it's the brick pattern, even on the south end, was made the same as the north end where the windows would go, but no windows. I don't know whether the budget ran out or what happened. But. <laughs> it seems odd they would <clears throat> it, that it would have been reversed, right? That they would have not had windows on the north side. The only thing I could get through my mind, north end for uh, art room light, you know, because you don't want bright sun or whatever. But anyways, uh, he is, or they, are we requesting that we seek permission from you folks to do that installation. I can't guarantee that once we figure out how much it's going to cost, he's going to go through with it. But we don't think it's proper to just have the windows on the top because I think I uh, she put in your packet that the windows are also on the second floor. Right. So uh, Mr. Southbrook and I would, at our expense, put the windows on the second floor so that it would match exactly what is in, on the north side because we don't think it would look good just to do that. Right, so it would um, so it would just look like the other side. You'd exactly try to have it Exactly the as, same as the north side on the south side. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with it either. The only- I have a problem with it. I want to thank you for preserving that building. You've done a wonderful job over there and I, yep. I want to congratulate you on that. Thank you very much. And it's back on the tax rolls. Awesome. Pretty soon. So do we have to vote well, to do that? I yes. What, should vote. What is, yes, you but, do. But I also had a question. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if it's for Barry or for Marley. So if we change, so this request to change windows. So is a request what has to happen for us or does a deed actually, does something have to change? Yeah, Lydia. I believe, I believe the deed does have a restriction. It does. In it about the yeah. size. So I think you would have to vote to right. waive the restriction. Um, I just didn't know how we, yeah, how far did, did we need to go? To That's recorded all. then. I think we need. No, because it's, no, it doesn't. it's just for this particular thing. Right. Okay. It's right. one thing. Okay. You're, you're waiving the restriction. It'll be in the record, your records. Um, but I mean, you can, I, that's the vote I would take and then double check with town council. I have. So okay. the restriction, okay. so I reviewed this with council. The uh, restriction is part of the deed that is recorded. 
and the vote was very clear that you know there couldn't be any exterior changes to the facade without approval from the town and town council is advised that the select board represents the town and oversees property so it would be the board that would have to vote to allow this perfect i'll make a motion to approve the window change um requested by barry roberts as presented i second that you're welcome a motion made and second any further discussion no. nope. all those in favor aye. aye thank you thanks barry hey guys okay so mike you're next mike chief yes. did he want to wrap you want to come up to the thanks lydia he's here for his budget yeah well he's also here Cruiser. for surplus property that's right too yeah i was going to speak to that but oh that's you're going to speak to it okay it doesn't matter he can speak to it no, as well. oh so the, the police chief has notified the board that um there's no longer a need for the 2014 ford explorer cruiser you good oh he's not. why don't we take a couple minutes to get everybody hooked okay. up okay do you want to take a do, okay let's keep going because this, right. this is going to be a long meeting so let's okay. um as i was saying the police chief has notified the select board that there is no longer a need for the 2014 um ford explorer cruiser okay. And therefore, if the board is willing to declare it a surplus, then we will probably um, put it on Minisabid to sell the vehicle. And that's a recommendation of the chief. So I, you so see, you need a vote to, a, to, to declare it declare surplus. surplus. I'll make mm -hmm. a motion to, to declare the 2014 Ford Explorer Cruiser as surplus. I second that. Based on the recommendation of the police chief. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have um, competitive edge racing event scheduled for April 8th. Is anybody here to speak to that? No, they, they are not here. They have reached out to the um, police chief and, and spoken. This group actually held an, uh, this event last year. Um, it's been made very clear to them by myself and another individual that there are no permanent markings allowed. Right. No spray so paint they are the restricted. Or they're okay. never coming back. I'm, yeah, I'm not, yeah. I mean, that would yeah. be my recommendation. Mm -hmm. that, um, that, and that yeah. should be what's told to everybody yeah. as we've talked yeah. about at previous we, meetings yes. on a go forward basis. Absolutely. I mean, I don't want to be a micromanaging yeah. people, but you know, it would be nice to well, get eyes on, mm -hmm. uh, on race day from somebody to say, yes. you know, whoever yes. it is, mm -hmm. you know, whether I not to put the police on, but oh, if no, we're there anyways, it, so, yes, you know, I, say, yeah. I mean, you know, let's, let's get yeah. to the bottom of this once and for all before our streets yeah. are all different yeah. colors. Man. Right. The plans are laid out here. This is a cycling event on April 8th between yep. nine and 5 PM. Yep. And, um, they will be, using the facility, the Lions Club Pavilion. Right. That is where they'll start. I guess. So th it says that there's an estimated 400 cyclists, yes, which that's... is a lot. And just so people know, the race begins on Billing Way. It goes Main Street until Prospect, takes a ride onto Prospect, follows Prospect until Straits, then at the fork in the road goes down Cronin Hill, then takes a left onto Depot, a right onto Straits Road, goes onto Long Plain Road in Waitley, onto Christian Lane, River Road, um, and take a right onto River Road. They will finish at Billings Way, just past Billings Way. So they finish back in town? It appears yeah, that way, yeah. We start. Okay. Um, we, we've done this before. Yeah, it does say each pack. Yeah, I just want yeah. townspeople to know. So. Okay. As long as they know our expectations and agree to them, then. Mm -hmm. So I will make a motion to approve the competitive edge racing team event scheduled for April 8th, 2023 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, and to reiterate to competitive edge that spray paint is not to be used on any mm -hmm. of our streets or sidewalks. They were also asked that any, any signs that are, are put up need to be removed after, as well yeah, yeah. 
Okay. And I will second that with the conditions that we've stated, <laughs> as long as they're included. <laughs> okay, a motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. One last item. We have the contract between the town of Hatfield and Mark Sternick, architect. Yes, he replaces um, uh, Laura oh, that was it. from... Um, yeah. Frank this Cedar is just Leslie. replacing the, the yes, contract. Yes, in town had. council. I've reviewed this uh, contract with town council, and Mr. I'll Sternick make a motion has accepted to approve it. the contract as presented. Second. <coughs> a motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that was pretty quick to get through that stuff. Um, See, we can do it when we want. We can. <laughs> <laughs> we're under the gun. Um, and so this evening we have joined once again by our wonderful finance committee. Welcome everybody. Oh, wonderful finance. Uh, and, um, we have several budgets to get through a couple big, big ones tonight, police library, recreation committee, school, and then all of the budgets that fall under our town administrator, which is one, two, three, four, ten. 10 lines. So quite a bit. We should probably dive right in. Mr. Dukoshak. Hi, Chief. How are you? Hi, Good. How are you? Mike. Thanks well, for being everybody. here tonight. Thanks for having me. <laughs> okay. okay, we'll give you the floor. Okay, um, I think we've all discussed this kind of in detail um, several times. Um, I made cheat sheets instead of that tiny little print on there, which I can't see. Um, so essentially we discussed, you know, we had a level budget and then a, a um, whatever we were calling it this year, what was it? A need. Need budget. Um, so as everybody knows, we've been losing part-time staff and it's become near impossible to hire uh, part-time staff that wants to come here and work. So we are, personnel-wise, we are in near dire straits. Um, my lieutenant's out now uh, with some with a recent injury. Not at work, thank God. But uh, so, you know, uh, we're dropping like flies over there, I guess. Um, it makes it hard to cover ships and that's that's where we're at so um i'm seeking to hire two additional personnel um full-time personnel uh, which would bring our total to five full-time personnel doing so just alleviates the need for all that extra uh, part-time personnel to, to fill shifts they would go on a rotating schedule at that point in time which they'd be working like any other police department um, you know, the, the weekends, the holidays, so on and so forth. So, which is, which is what I'm asking for, uh, budget wise, it's a humongous ask. I get it. Um, you know, cause there's also in there, you know, there's overtime pay for holidays because now we're paying these people time and a half to work a holiday because they're, you know, they're full time, so on and so forth. <clears throat> that figure, um, is essentially 100 and, uh, 143,799 dollars extra in my salary budget. I'm also asking, and this is contingent on two full-time people, another, another cruiser uh, to bring our cruisers up to four. Uh, we obviously can't run two, two mainstream cruisers and a spare cruiser with five personnel we would burn those cars up re really quickly um and probably be in worse shape overall so yeah so but you wouldn't have five people on at the same time no no so no, no, no 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 i need a little more explanation oh, of okay so for cruiser. years we've covered seven days a week 16 hours a day that's what we are budgeted for right. and what we schedule yeah. for um Going forward, I don't, I couldn't, I couldn't promise exactly what schedules would look like. I know you would have at least 40 hours a week for me, 40 hours a week for my other 
uh, full timers. Um, but I'm not sure about weekends, holidays, vacations, et cetera, et cetera. That's what I'm, I can't promise you'll have coverage for. Um, so uh, essentially what it comes down to is I can't promise that there'll be a Hatfield police officer on a Saturday morning or a Saturday afternoon or, or, you know, a holiday Columbus day or whatever. But, but I guess my question is that doesn't explain the need for, to me, to the, to, for another cruiser. Right. I mean, <laughs> if, if am I making sense? I mean, no, I, I'm, I, I'm assuming when you're if you're not working or your lieutenant or somebody else, then that cruiser is available for whoever is working. I misunderstood you. So there would be some doubling up. It's because it's <laughs> possible to span uh, 200 hours into a, you know, 200. Hours, so five full time people would be 200 hours per week. They have to be doubled up at some point on some of those. Uh, evening shifts or whatever to make. So whether the schedules of a four on two <laughs> off, uh, okay. something of that nature, there would obviously be some doubling up on some of those days. So if we're running a cruiser um, uh, 16 hours a day um, or both cruisers, right now we run a cruiser 16 hours a day. We're not running two cruisers 16 hours a day. Um, so that additional cruiser um, <coughs> just a lot of that wear and tear on on two cruisers running 16 hours a day. I don't know. It, it, to me, it just makes sense. To, <clears throat> cruisers are expensive um, nowadays. We keep them in really good shape. You know, we're running five years in a car most of the time, uh, if not six. Um, if, if I have to come back every two years for a cruiser, um, I'm going to start to get annoying. Um, you know what I mean? So it's just if we if we take the hit right up front with another new cruiser that we're keeping mileage down on, on two brand new cruisers now instead of just, you know, I don't know that it just makes sense to me. I understand. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but then there'd be five, not three. You're so, asking for five cruisers. No, I mean, no, no, you'd, there, you'd have no, five. there'd be yes. three, three and one spare. Four. Yeah. Four so there'd cruisers. be a total of four cruisers. Four cruisers. Yeah. yeah. One's always going to be a spare. Um, that's the one that always has the most mileage on it. That's the one we keep just in case uh, when the <coughs> goes down so that we're not, you know, without a car. Without a car. So can I ask, you mentioned double shifts that are doubled up. Is that, have have we done that before? We're, so you'd have two cruisers on sometimes? Yes. Yep. And do we do that now? We do not do that now. <coughs> and, and what is warranting that? Like, because just to schedule people so that there's somebody on 16 hours a day, at some point, there's going to be two people on, whether it be uh, Thursday, Friday, this week, Monday, Tuesday, next week, so on and so forth, just to facilitate a schedule. I think, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but what you're saying is if you hire two full-time people, mm -hmm. there are going to be times when they're, when they're doubled up. Yeah. And so that everybody it, gets their 40 hours. Right, right. because you can't because you can't get per diem people to fill shifts like we used right. to. Well, so there's you don't been have. a change in, I mean, you've talked yeah. to us at length about the change in the retraining and the change in requirements. Right. At this. Yeah, I mean, it covers another area that we haven't discussed that much, which is just today's day and age, even officer safety. You know what I mean? It'd be nice to have two people on every night shift, <coughs> um, but that's not really practical. So in this... And there would be no part-time people? There still would be. I would keep the ones that I have now, but just for, uh, you Vacations. know, that occasional shift, you know, which is all they're working now. You know, if they work a shift a month or something like that, uh, the ones that are, the, the part-timers I have now are, are I have one that <coughs> is, they, all, they have full-time jobs. You know what I mean? So it's not like this is their thing. They're willing to go through the bridge to keep their jobs, the bridge academy to keep their jobs, and they're willing to stay on. But it's not something that that they're going to do full time. So, for the benefit of us and townspeople, um, the budget um, that's essentially level funded. Mm -hmm. Can you? And because 
you understand, I think everybody understands the additional budget it would be dependent on some sort of override or an override. Yep. Yep. Um, so <coughs> for the Bennett, so again, for, for us and, and the townspeople, what would the department look like if you were level funded? How many shifts could you cover? What days would be off? I'm budgeted to, to, I am budgeted to work 16 hours a day, seven days a week. I understand. I don't have people to work that. I understand. So if I'm level budget, budgeted, I can't tell you when, when we would be and there, we when we would. we have had shifts with no officers. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I don't, so right now, if I, if I wanted to take tomorrow off, even though I've got hundreds of hours of time, mm -hmm. impossible, there'd be nobody here. So that's what I'm getting at. There's I, I, there's I no way to come up with with a of hey I can promise you this because I can't I can't promise you when I know I'll, there'll be somebody here Monday through Friday during the day that I can promise because that's right. me. And 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 part of, and I'm I'm not trying to be a pain in the butt. No, and I, I get you. I, and I apologize, but part of this is for us and for townspeople to understand. So. If a budget, if we, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to put forth a, a budget override, mm -hmm. and if it doesn't go forward, this is what the police department, and it's not a threat, it's not, not anything like that. It's just reality. Correct. This, and and so for me, it would be helpful to know that, you know, there will be, you know, even if you came back and said, yeah, there would be some weekend shifts, there would be no coverage. You, you, I mean, you are Superman, but not, you know, well, everyone's got to take a, take some time no, off. Good no more, but <laughs> so, so I, I'm, I, I think it would benefit this whole process if you could come up with something. I'm, and yeah. I understand the best answer I can give to this in all honesty <laughs> is, is that I don't want anybody to feel strong armed, you know what I mean? Into, uh, funding our budget you know what i mean i i don't want that for the townspeople i want the townspeople to make a decision on what they want their department to look like so if they want their if if they want to see a hatfield police officer in a guaranteed fashion of what we've always done which is 16 18 hours it's, it's actually 18 hours a day 18 hours a day seven um days a seven days a week then this is what it's going to cost if if we level fund, I simply put, cannot promise you'll get a Hatfield police officer when you call. It's as yeah. simple as that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I apologize yeah. for being- Oh, I, no, it's I, fine. It's I do think that if, when, if, if we do go to an override and we're putting information out, we're going to want to see, you know, we, we need something we can present to residents. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it seems like it's going to come down to like, how many part-time shifts can you fill? How many, like all these things that you just really don't know. And like, I have, maybe, the, money, know. I have I mean, the money at a level funded budget to fill shifts. I just but don't people have do. people to fill them. I, yeah. you know, I right. do have part-timers that work for me that have worked for this town for years that would take a full-time position. They're already full-time trained. Um, but they have full-time jobs right now because, you know, um, so they can give me maybe a month, a day, a month, or, you know, we used to have 13 people on our roster and, and a lot of them were young people and they were hungry. I mean, you, you, they were fighting over shifts. Uh, it's just not the case anymore. Right. Um, and the, the state mandated training has a lot to do with that. It does. And, and you know, that and state, that, but I, I know we talked, we've talked yeah. about it, but maybe to re reiterate for the folks, I don't that, want to bad mouth the state mandate. Any training is better. In fact, Massachusetts, I hate to say this ranks somewhere in like 40, 45th, 46 for training their cops in the country. It's like really bad and how much money they spend. Right. Um, but, it, but it had to do with, you needed so much training. You do. And after you do that as, as a candidate, as a cadet candidate, yep. you then don't want to come out and work a part-time shift. You no. want, you want you to go want get the real job. job. So, course, so that yep. is why we're having this and conversation and you can get it because now you'll be you fully trained. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of departments. So that's where a lot of this. is The identical conversation to the fire. Engine. Absolutely. It, it, it really it's, is. It's, it's across the board. Service. It is. And, and, Again, it comes down to what do the townspeople want? Yep. Um, you know, 
from a safety standpoint, I know what I would recommend, but again, I don't pay the tax bill here. So no. it's not, I mean, it's not, it's not strictly public safety. It's a, it's an overall thing. Yeah. I mean, unemployment is at the lowest rate it's been since I was born. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's been a while and, you know, like, so it's harder to find people who just want to work, you know, yeah. Once in a while, well, yeah, three shift. days a week. Yeah. I'll right. pick we up this. Had, I'll do that. We've had people right. just like in on the ambulance side. Right. We did on the police side. We had residents who had the certifications that were necessary. Were willing to put in shifts or go out on ambulance calls in the middle of the night. Right. And that's just changing. And yep. we need to address that as a community and and make decisions about right, right. what works best um, in each department. So. Agreed. So that's where I mean again that's that's where we're at. I didn't I didn't fluff it up, you know. It's it, I mean there's some extra expense money in there as well because that's that would support the two extra full time people, yeah. uniforms, this, that, and the other thing, and and uh, you know uh, obviously other things are going up, but I'm. I know, think that if you, the that, cruiser but. part of it is you're you need to give a clear very clear explanation of that. Yeah. why that is part rolled into this. Case. Well, I mean, I, I, again, the clearest mm -hmm. explanation I can give of that is just wear and tear. I mean, and when you have, I have two, two cruisers, which is my cruiser. And then the, the one that's used Monday through Friday. Um, so without a third cruiser, um, we're going to rack miles up on the two. Mine's a 2015. They'll bury me in it. Um, <laughs> quite frankly, I don't like changing things. So, um, and then the other one, which is the brand new hybrid, um, that's, it takes us about three years to 165,000 miles on one of those cars. Um, so that extra cruiser is, would be pretty vital in <coughs> because again, we're coming back, we'd be coming back every two years for a car, um, with that many full-time people using it. And there's other problems. I mean, just adding two full-time people is is the solution now um, to fill shifts. But the department's small. You know, it's a small space. There's going to be problems there we'll have to deal with in terms of space and everything else. Um, we'll, that'll, that same discussion will kick in on the fire and ambulance this, side. The whole situation is... it's. Um, it's a little messy, quite frankly. It's gonna. Well, I think we're just some, at a crossroads. Uh, working, we need to yeah, make some, through some decisions things. as yeah. a community. This is a start. Did you guys have any other questions? We'll have you back. Yes, for I'm sure. I'm sure you will. <laughs> People are getting jealous, though. They're like, "My God, you've been there twice talking about your budget." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you Thanks. very much, Chief. Hi there. Hey. Hi, Liza. Oh. How are you, Liza? Good. good. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Good. Mike is right on time, or pretty close to right on time. So oh, nice. we're getting you in here right on time, too. Um, so we'll go ahead and give you the, you, you know, the floor. If there's anything you wanted to um, point out, you're looking for a level funded. Yep, I'm just looking for a level funded budget. Um, I think the, um, you know, I think that it seems like uh, electricity and heating oil are going up. We're okay so far this year, yeah. but I think that's something to look for in the future. And I'm concerned about, um, you know, I told you guys we're just talking about staffing, but um, certainly just being able to keep the wages up. The last couple of times I've had to hire someone, it's been very difficult. I've really found, I'm, I'm finding amazing people, but it's often like the only, basically <laughs> the only viable candidates. Um, and 
Uh, I'm concerned about the lack of like sick time for staff. It's becoming, you know, we have all, everyone at the library is part time, but it's becoming much more normalized for part time people to have sick time. And I think that really makes us less competitive compared to other similar part time hourly jobs that someone could get. Um, and it's not like our people are working irregular hours. Like everyone who works part time at the library comes in, you know, on the same days every week. If they're sick, it's because they're really sick and they can't come in. Um, it's not like I'm. It's not like I'm paying people per diem to come in. Uh, and then the in addition, so I work 24 hours a week and I have benefits. And then there's uh, the assistant director who works 18 hours a week and doesn't have benefits. And we have had um, some turnover in this that position. We have a wonderful woman in there right now, but I do think that that position should be moved up a few hours and given benefits. Or I'm I'm worried about filling that position in the future, but that's not actually a big ask from the town. Um, in fact, I could at least initially cover it myself through donation money and state aid. It would just be the the health insurance question and the and the paid time. Well, I mean, the paid time doesn't really affect the town because I would just pay that out of the budget. But the health insurance question would affect the town. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we know that wages yeah. <laughs> in town are just low. Across the board, yeah, you know, we 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 just don't pay people. We don't. We don't. I mean, keep, well, there's. Don't do any. Hmm? You can't get you can't get prorated sick time at yeah. all, right? Twenty okay. hours. You if you're yeah, hours. if you're, you're twenty hours, it's prorated. Yeah, talking talking so to my staff, no I think that's almost as much of an issue hours. as the hourly. It's you know. Pro rate, yeah, between three halves. Right. I think you can change that rule. Other towns are changing the rules. That rule, uh, Northampton, so the, the, Leverett, the state sick law or that. sick leave law does not apply to municipal municipal employees. Employees working twenty hours are entitled to prorated benefits less than 20 so, hours they're not entitled so the to state did pass a law saying all part-time employees have to have sick time and i think that's what may is making this okay. uh change the environment for us because municipalities are exempt um, okay. so like now if you work at target part-time you get sick time I but if you work at the public library part-time yeah. you don't get sick time so we would the board would like <laughs> to look review that hr yeah, policy that. It's an i mean HR we need policy. to make sure that we're mm -hmm. Like if you work at Cumberland Farms, you're probably exempt. You get sick time. Mm. Yeah, I mean, just should, because you're exempt doesn't mean it doesn't mean it should be that way. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. And there's definitely been like a wave of towns around here, sort of, you know, it's just well, you, you don't have to pay minimum wage. What's that? Do you have to pay minimum wage? No. Oh, we do. Yeah, we do. Right. <laughs> but so no, I, we don't. I, I not again. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. You're right. We We're don't exempt. have to. Yeah. Town doesn't have to pay minimum wage. No. No. Municipalities do not need to. Do not have to. I should say. I don't know how you. The luck we are. We are not doing minimum wage. <laughs> but. I don't understand. So, so Eliza, thank you for the well, for the budget. Anybody, so, but. so is there the? So, are you asking us to look into? I would the love if you would look into for, sick and part time for. Okay. For, yeah, yeah right. I would. I would love that. I, there wasn't really like a spot in the budget to put that. Yeah, I, I understand. I'm, I'm just reading your cover letter and yeah, making from sure my we. Perspective. Yeah. That's like the critical issue okay. coming up. Um, I think we can do that. I don't know. What the and result. then specifically, um, you know, for the one position that I'd like to move to be a benefited position, um, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I just wanted to give a heads up about that. Well, you know, if we're, if we're going to contemplate an override, that would be. Oh, I think it's we're not well, that much. I but. think we're well beyond contemplation. Yeah. <laughs> although, although if you try to be gentle here, I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, hit it with a hammer. <laughs> although, if you, if you're budgeting a full time person already, I mean, if you're budgeting based on a number of hours, right, already, sick time really shouldn't have any impact mm. other than on what you spend. So it might reduce free cash or something because there'll be less money coming back that's unspent because you don't know, didn't pay the person, but yes. you've already budgeted the money for the person being right. there every single day. Yeah. All Very right. good. That makes sense. Right? There's yes, no. Yeah. But do you have to call someone else in to cover the shift? 
It depends, so you know, on the circumstance. A, a lot well, of people, you know, a lot of times in a pinch, someone can cover themselves, or sometimes I can go in and cover. So that's like out of my hours. Um, yeah. I, so my my budget is actually set up right now. So I'm I'm slightly over. Like my staffing is slightly over the amount that I need because every year I. I mean, I'm sorry, it's not over the amount that I need. It's Sorry, let me articulate this correctly. It's over my total budget number. So if every single person worked every single hour they were supposed to work, I would be over budget. But because people do have to take off for personal times, I end up you know, at my budget or slightly under budget. Sometimes I have to supplement a little out of our state aid money. Um, so if people had sick time or personal time, then that wouldn't... I'd have to recalculate slightly, but for me personally, it would be in the thousands of dollars. Like it would be maybe like two thousand dollars. We're not talking. Certainly, we're not talking two and a half override. I think you're making an important distinction, though, between people who work per diem shifts mm -hmm. as needed yeah. and people who are basically part-time part -time employees, employees coming in on a regular basis. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's what I have at the library. But my point is. Uh, to your point, saying that it's not really a two and a half override thing. If we're having one anyway, then you would, if there's a department with the change, regardless of how large or small it is, it would be mm -hmm. the time to do it. Yes. Well, and if she's struggling, if struggling to hire people, right? I mean, that's that's a simple benefit. What do we pay part time? Uh, we pay sixteen dollars and twenty five cents for the like basic circulation person. Pretty tough to fill. So, yeah, it is very tough prior. to. I used to yeah. put out job applications and I would just get so many qualified people. <coughs> and now I last over the summer we had to hire a couple people and we posted everywhere. I got my staff to help me, like think of any listserv or notice board we could put on. And I ended up getting a great group of people, but I really don't want to lose them again. And there's so much stuff out there, and. Um, and, you know, and a lot everyone I have. I mean, I think I'm safe to say that it's, it seems like everyone who I have working at the library is is enjoys working at the library. Like they want to stay. <laughs> I think the only reason people are leaving is if there's just better options. Sure. You know. and, and I think five, getting sick five time. Five years ago, what did we pay? Like, uh, we. I'm we, not. Yeah. It's, it's it's so it was so low. <laughs> yeah. So like I mean, part of the thing that's happened here, right, is that minimum wage has caught mm -hmm. caught us. Mm -hmm. You yep. know, like to. Oh, yeah. to some degree. Mm -hmm. So uh, and but if I heard you you also think that making the assistant librarian position more hours with benefits would yeah. would help. Yes. I think that would be a huge help um, just for the oper operations so of the not library not included in this budget. So I guess it's that's what I was in this saying if we're if there's yeah. going to be an override or as Daryl right. says there's going to be an override mm -hmm. um, request then it makes sense to add it, that amount, whatever, however small okay. you might think it is, to to do it. Yes. Yep. Okay. I can I can add I can add it and send another copy of the budget. Yeah. That might be a good idea. Suggest, one with it, one without it. Doing that. Yeah. I will do that. Yeah. Great. And then the town would just have to to take on the the possible health insurance. Right. 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 Well, that would be added. If we're adding police officers and whatever we're, else we're adding, we're going to have to add. Yeah, add we just put out general calculation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We would have some to add number of people that. take it, some number. Yeah, exactly. We don't pay a huge percentage, so okay. it's no guarantee that people oh. take it. Wow. Some people yeah. 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 definitely yeah. take it because it's so, Has you know, been, right. but the percentage we pay Catches up. is not. Tremendous, right. right? So, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what the situ what the choice would be here. I just want. I know it has to be available. So, yeah. 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 Okay, I would do that for the second request. Yeah. Thank you. Thank well, you. I will email uh, Marlene with that. And yeah, that would be great, Eliza. Thank, Eliza. Thank you so much. Have a really good evening. Thank You're you. Welcome. Good Thank to you. see you. Thank you. <laughs> So the next budget we have up for discussion is the Recreation um, Committee. No one is here. They've submitted a level funded budget. So I assume they have. Yeah, no, no changes. Um, have, they, have they spent all that money that so they So the 5000 in the operating budget Sorry. is depleted. Okay, so we're back to actually they, giving them some money? They use the revolving fund as well. Um, okay. 
but that's right. what they're they're leaning on the rest of this business. At one point, year. though, they had more money in the revolving yes. fund than yes. they could actually have. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they had to spend that down. Right. Well, I think they money. run a lot of programs with oh. not a lot of money. Oh no, they do great. They, they do. do great. So do you you good with the recreation? I'm good. So next we have the school budget. Christy, Michael, you want to pull up another chair? Does it have to be a table? Uh, so, for the size of this, right? No, it's not. No, but it's a lot of background. Is it? Exactly. Oh, oh, this yeah, is I'm new. New and improved. Oh, oh wow! Materials were donated. Thank you. How are you, Michael? Good. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. So. It's a, it's a lot of pages, but as I said, it's more information than like we're going to go at a pretty quick pace. Um, it's the first time we've all sat together, so it's the first time you're seeing some of these numbers, and we just want to make sure that we're giving you lots of context um, and just some reference about how we how we got to here. So this came. Um, this is a reflection of a. Um, consensus, a unanimous consensus from the five elected school committee members. So you're seeing Michael and I here today, but there are there are others with us who this was the path forward that we wanted to bring to the table. We are very aware that what we're asking for is um, comes at a time of crossroads, I think is the term I just heard. And that's but we, we have a case that we need to put forward to you because it's the right thing we feel to do for our schools and for our town as a whole. Um, we are coming today with a proposal for a 3.6 investment in addition to level services for fiscal 24. And the presentation you have in front of you is going to break out the level services and that investment so that you can see what you would get with each and, and what the costs are separately. Um, and in addition, we want to give you a quick outline of savings and revenue efforts that are underway um, and just really kind of give the context of what the return on the investment is. Um, and looking to set that in the broader context of some what's going on in the environment, it's going to be uh, in some ways similar to what I think you're hearing from other departments. Um, but specific to schools in looking at local and area population changes, which is not just a Hatfield issue. And so we want to give you some context to see where we are relative to other districts in our area, just residential school population as a whole. Some changes in school choice trends, which has a significant impact on the Hatfield school budget. Um, and then just there's a little bit of research here about what happens um, when big changes happen to, to school districts and towns. So we will do our best to be efficient with your time. Um, just to quickly look today at Hatfield Public Schools, some of the stuff that's going on in terms of our investment in new math curriculum, math assessments, um, some really focused professional development work that's going on, both at the, in an advisory model at Smith Academy, literacy training at our elementary school, um, and an anti-bullying curriculum that started at the elementary school. We've been working on security upgrades for both schools and have completed both uh, phones and locks. We've increased our internet bandwidth without an addition to cost. By the way, I think Michael was able to double our bandwidth without upping the cost, which is fantastic. We've improved our billing for technology. Again, better service, lower price. We're managing as best we can with a roof that is on a capital plan and HVAC issues. We continue to scope some budget for building maintenance. Um, and we have a website overhaul in the works for later this year. And, excuse me, it, it just mm -hmm. for people that are listening, that's the roof sure. at the elementary school. That is the roof of the elementary okay. school, just, yes. You know, in case we need to break it out for people. For sure. Yeah. Thank you. 
Um, we completed contract negotiations at the end of last school year for both our teachers and our supporting staff. And so we have those contracts lined up now, which is sort of efficient. And um, that ended really successfully. So we had an increase there of 2.6% on the teachers and professional levels staff. And because, it, and by the way, we are no means um, anywhere close to the top of the, the regional pay bracket. <laughs> so our teachers make considerably less than neighboring towns, but we were able to work together really well that we were able to staff sufficiently to open the doors fully staffed with teaching. So in areas where it's really, we've had, every area has had a hard time keeping staff. Um, we had great success this year. Um, where regionally and nationally, we've seen a lot of people leave teaching to be able to, to walk in day one and how our teacher staff was really fantastic. Um, we're also finding, gener finding savings and generating revenue. So solar power turned on at Smith Academy, which has helped, while we would have predicted it might have been um, a bonus. <laughs> in fact, it's just taking the sting out of really significant electrical cost increases. So it, hard to say how much it, it's a help. It's a little harder to measure in today's economic environment. Um, we've decreased the monthly phone costs at both schools. We've decreased the costs of our software that reaches out to the broader pots, um, family population. We've increased preschool revenues and are actually looking at preschool tuition rates as part of um, 24 that's not yet reflected. Um, we are offering um, district provided before and after care that is cost neutral, but is a huge benefit <coughs> to our families, particularly working parents have taken great advantage of that. It's a really big deal. And we're excited to share that the STARS classroom and step-down program, so one at the, at the elementary, one at the secondary school, are both saving out of district placement costs and generating tuition. So we've, you know, that was a program we came several years ago and said, if we build it, they will come. And we're excited that we now have revenue in our budget from these programs. So cost savings for sure, and that's significant, but revenue as well. Can I just... I'm just curious, I, I was going to ask a question about projected preschool enrollment. Is that later in the um, this I'll, presentation? It's not not particularly, but we are, I mean, we have been cap at, we cap at 30 students and we anticipate hitting that cap. Okay. And that's all, that's. So you're, you're filling the preschool. We're filling both preschool classrooms. So level services would include maintaining the number of teachers and sections at both schools. And we believe it's really key to our future that we continue to have um, relatively small class sizes. That's what we're known for. It's a big benefit. And I think we hear our residents expect that as well. Um, it would maintain those two preschool classrooms, which are revenue generating, keep the electives, keep the sports as they currently are, maintain software that's available, maintaining technical support, including hardware, and continue rigorous professional development for our staff and that we would look to expand electives without a cost increase so staff based my only question was on the chromebooks i mean what why don't we invest they're through the capital plan. it's through right now chromebooks have been funded through capital plans and so we rotate replacements out there's a there's a finite life for those we and then there i think was a quad or five segments that they rotate through. But they're, they, they shouldn't be in here, right? I mean, they're not part of the budget. They're part of the capital plan. They're part of the capital plan, but there's sort of, but we have to support taking care of those and also the sort of the staffing and the software and all the maintenance of it is not. The maintenance of that would be in here. Um, Do you have an idea of what type of, you, you mentioned expanding electives. I, I'm going to get to that okay. in detail. I don't want to jump ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so again, you see level services are where fiscal 23, the investment is where we would look to grow. So our target enrollment has an increase of fewer than three students per grade level. So that's 20 students per school. 
Um, we would look for a slight uptick in teachers and an additional licensed staff professional. Our educational support staff, custodians and admin assistants would be level. And we would look, we would actually be recommending having one fewer administrator um, because we've moved tech services from having a head count that, um, to a contracted service. And that's um, kind of came out of necessity. And so we share this, we share the same service as town in terms of tech support, friends and efficiencies. Um, just as a fun fact, um, looking at the average tuition paid right now through school choice, if we can grow our school choice numbers by our targeted goal, it would more than pay for the investment dollars we're looking for. So those are always just a year behind. Right, so we always get that tuition a year after we've had the students. What's the plan to attract these students here? Because I will speak to that too. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm, so on that page, the level services, so the enrollment at the elementary school is 218 and at Smith Academy 139, correct? Today. Yeah, so we'll, it, further on, is there uh, the breakout of how many are Hatfield residents and how many are choice, okay. I, we haven't seen this before, so just so people I, I understand, totally, we're not trying to bust anybody's, no, no, no. okay. I totally agree. It's all brand new, so, which is why there's lots of yeah. set up. Thank you. Um, so our proposed full budget is $7,305,965. The town portion of that, the level service would be 5.7. The investment piece that we're talking about to look for that growth is $264,000. And so the total town ask is 5.9. We have some funds that we're speculating from grants and, and revenues, and we've added our school choice dollars in. So this is a disproportionately larger town piece of the pie than it has historically been because our school choice numbers are significantly down. So this year we saw a 15% drop in school choice students from 22 to 23, which impacts the available funds for school choice for fiscal 24. Historically, looking at, I have data for 2015 through 21, and our school choice funds tend to be about 20% of our budget. And right, it's just, it's not available because we didn't have the school choice students this year. So do we know why that is? Yes, that's to some degree, and that's what we have put a plan to address. That's what exactly. Is it? What is the reason? Is it in here? It's in here. Oh, <laughs> sorry. It's, I'm sorry. That's it's, all right. I can jump ahead, but then we're going to no, no, no. flip we'll, through. We're going to just go with your plan. Okay. So, again, you're going to have a quick look at what's behind those numbers. We're optimistic the governor may come through with some changes in Chapter 70 because they have not kept pace, particularly for rural districts. Mm. But we, I mean, Optimism is kind of what I have today. Well, you use the word optimism with the grant funding too. Are those ones that you have historically yes, we have secured? His so it's a reasonable expectation? It's a reasonable expectation. Although, I mean, we did see Title I funding get cut in half sort of without warning, but that's back up now. So it ebbs and flows a little bit. We've kind of rolled with it. Um, you can, so... These are the stabilizing funds. You have some interest from background, some big differences. Obviously, there is no more ESSER funding available to us. The last little bit of ESSER 3 money is, is in the budget. So we've, we've captured it. So we've scrubbed all of those possible funding sources. Um, competitive wages impacted us significantly too. Um, and, you know, that's kind of where we are. So when we look at our level service budget, um, thinking about wages in that level service piece, 58% of that increase is staffing increases. So that big shift in level, that, that's where that went. Um, we would like on page eight to give you some sense of as best we have data available, how our school spending looks in comparison to the area around us. 
Um, so we've talked about losing school choice students. Um, if you can take a look, you can see we've got um, sort of a 10 district look across several things, looking at who was very nearby, who was similar to us, and who in the region spent most similarly to us. So you'll see South Hadley and West Springfield may not look like our district, but they are the closest to us in what we spend per student. So on a per student spending basis, so that's not, that's gonna be as apples to apples as we can get the data. Um, and the most recent data DESE has published is 2021. We can see that Hatfield ranks 374th in spending per pupil in the state of Massachusetts. And that 374 is out of 398 total districts. I would have anticipated because of our small size and our, our need to share fixed costs that the small size would help propel us into a higher rank because our we have fixed costs that can't be split over as many students, but that isn't where we are. Um, so we have been spending um, in 21, we were at 15,225 per student. With that little investment spend and level services that we're looking at, that would come out to 18,400 per pupil, which is still less than where Frontier was three years ago. So can I just, my understanding of this number is that it's not just, it, it's, it's the whole, it's your whole budget plus the town side. Is that correct? So, so any money from, from um, health insurance and, and benefits, that's all in these numbers. Those are not taken out of these numbers. Correct. And the health insurance is a spot where we particularly do not compete well on the teacher side. Right. So most districts are about 75% contribution. And it has cost us teachers. So um, if we, just to kind of give some relative nature to this, if we spent where Frontier did, um, just kind of trying to keep that 2021 perspective, it would be an additional 1.4 million to our budget just to, to get up to where they are. And they're about average for the state. I think also if you look at comparably sized communities, with com which is hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I've looked out across Western Mass, including Worcester County. If you look at comparably sized districts, population wise with comparable tax bills their chapter 78 is dramatically higher than ours Why? generally speaking because they're poorer they're, they're needed. and their needs are much higher they i mean there could be other reasons they could have more non-english speaking students they could have you know there could be other things but generally it comes down to right so one district i don't see on here is granby which i've always considered a sort of Comparable to Granby? No. Well, its choice is big in terms of population. Granby's almost 7,000 people. but it's... Well, I and mean, we're also looking at towns like Amherst, well, which are much larger than that. We're looking at some of it's where we're getting students, some of it's people who are, I was just looking in the region, who spent close to what we did to see what impact that might or might not have had. So we have some folks that are a little different. I'd be happy going forward to put Granby in the mix. Yeah, um, I have them right here. You have to update the numbers. They're, you know, their local contribution is about is about half of what ours is. They're about one hundred and twenty three percent of net school spending, and we're at one hundred fifty four. So you know, again, they're getting. Getting more chapter seven. They're getting uh, three times as much chapter seventy eight as we are. And, and the aid is obviously important, right, for for all of us. But I but I I think that, and we'd like to have more per pupil spending. 
But I think the formulas for it aren't necessarily meaning that because we spend less, we're not giving the children the education, right? That I think they, we're doing that they a require. Job I, I, I do, you know, again, it's right. it's how we say things and what it means, and and I get it. It's low. Right? Trust me. Um, but I want to make sure that people don't think that because because we're only spending, when you do all the math, only spending fifteen thousand per per student. It it it's sort of a it's hard to explain. It, it's not just that we're giving 25% less education than somebody who's spending $20,000 per student, right? I mean, that that's not how this works. And no. I want to make sure but that we we're, everybody have, understands that. But we also have to be competitive with what's being I, offered. I understand that. But, and, and there is an impact. But there. there but we, it's, we just need the big picture as far as I'm concerned when we have these well, conversations. We might be offering different things that Right. We might be offering different things that aren't as related to cost. Yes. Right. I, I, there, there are those things. I mean, I know yeah. you're into all this yeah. stuff, Sean, you know, but but I just want to, because we've had this conversation yeah. in the past, but, well, every year. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. so I don't know if this is correct, but say something happened and we decided we're not going to fund a school at all. Let's just, whatever. Whatever Smith Academy, the whole goes away. We are still the town is still responsible for educating. Oh, absolutely, all the kids. Yeah, yes. They would be going to some of these schools, and we would have to pay what those schools are charging right now. So we would we would we would, would probably we would in the end pay more money. And not have a school and system. And have yes. less control over those yes. funds. Yes. I, I, I have it, to disagree with you. Is that fair? Uh, no. Because I think we're taking into account the number total number of students. And we wouldn't be paying for the school really? choice students so, to go to another district. We'd only be paying for the 89 kids that are currently at Smith Academy. Yes, Brian. And we've no, and plus the other kids that we already pay to go to other districts. Right. right. But, but, that, but that's already there. But we've done the math yeah. to look at resident students only. What would we have to pay if we we would expect to be paying in this rate because that's what they spend per student? And we've, you know, Adam and I and Michael done the numbers. <laughs> it's not cheaper, even if it's only our students. So discounting out every school choice student, just our students that we would be obligated to pay for. Right. It is not a cost savings. So, but, well, yeah, because you're going to lose revenue on the revenue side. Too. And, well, that's all the revenue coming right. in for school choice students that's also going to go away if they're not there. Right, correct. So, it just because, the, because they spend so much more per pupil, that's why it's such a savings to us to keep our school healthy and strong. So, just as a reference sheet where the recent history has been, um, the increase to schools we have, until we saw some extra spending in COVID related needs, which town came through and a great, very supportive of the schools. And we're very thankful for. Um, but prior to that, we didn't have a particularly big investment in our school program. Our average increase from fiscal year 16 to 22 was 2.24% in the town side. And part of that we were able to offset because we had healthy school choice budgets. Um, and so that's where that difference in having 20% of our budget filled by school choice funds takes a real hit right now because we just don't have the, the tuition revenue to cover that. Um, so you can kind of see that. Page 10 gives you a peek at the shifting population so the red line that's going across there is the resident student population. So that's just all the school-aged kids in Hatfield and the shift from 2003 to 2022. Um, and you can see that that trend is down 32%. However, our district has done a great job because while our population may be down 32% in that timeline, the district enrollment is only down 20 so that's every school age child. That's what the red line is. Is that yes. what you said? That's yes. very interesting. And so the purple, the big block of purple, is the public school enrollment. 
And then what you see at the gray at the very bottom, which is a really steady line, is school choice out. So we do have a few students that leave the district for school choice. Um, that number has been really level year in, year out. Um, and then the yellow in between there is the school choice enrollment. And so the school choice enrollment has been shifting down since 2012. It was down 13% from 2012 to 22. It's down 39% from 2019 to, to this year, which is why we're, we're bringing the plan forward that we're, we're bringing. And you're gonna to get to the reasons. That's right, right here. So um, we have a greater decline in population than most, but not all. And I've given you in the appendix, there's lots of detail on that. Um, so here's what we're doing to turn things around. We crafted a three-year strategic plan earlier this year that focuses on growth of students, teachers, and the district as a whole. We have measurable goals. We're tracking them monthly, and it has three focus areas, not all of which have budget implications. Um, and the whole plan is in the appendix, if you'd like to see it. Um, we conducted personal outreach to every departing Smith Academy family to understand why they left the district um, and to look at where they're going. We did um, an inventory of district offerings around us, particularly looking at two things. Um, one, what is something that could set us apart? What could we offer that would make us a destination for a theme that was important, that would be attractive to students, um, but would also be something that we could offer and do better than other districts. So a point of competitive advantage, if I want to put it in marketing speak. Um, and then we also looked to make sure that we were filling the gaps. So what was going on in neighboring districts that we might be losing students from? And where, um, where does our course offering not quite compete? And so those are the places we've looked to invest in. And then lastly, we're making sure that we have a cross-functional team to set some criteria down so that if, if we were not able to turn things around and it was going to be cheaper to do something different, um, that we have metrics that we're watching for that and a group that we set down some criteria so that if we need to pivot somewhere down the road, um, that we're not the frog in the pot, that you know, that we, we don't want to get to mix the metaphors. We don't want, we don't want to get to a cliff and, and not have a plan. And so we're not there, but we just, we're just saying, we don't wanna get there without a plan and we're working on that too. So the destination idea we have right now is that we already have some competitive advantage in computer science. Um, it's an area of study that is only going to grow more relevant across fields. Um, certainly it's a job that has a lot of employee satisfaction high annual salaries, and job openings continue to, to thrive in that area. Um, and students also see across the country having coding skills is valuable, equivalent to learning a foreign language, which it very much is akin to. Um, and there's benefits to learning it even if you don't use it in terms of what it brings you, similar to learning a language. So we're looking to invest in um, time for some coding additional teaching at Smith Academy, and some marketing spend. So that when we build a flagship program, that we're out there marketing it, marketing that investment so that people know to come look at us. Um, minding the gaps, obviously it's not only important, important to get school choice students in, it's important to keep our local residents with us as well. And so the upside of that is usually doing one delivers the other. Um, so speaking to parent and student preferences is our most dynamic lever for being able to impact school enrollment. And so the places that we are hearing from parents that we think we could make the biggest bang for the buck is to um, add in foreign language into the elementary school. So we're looking for an additional full-time teacher and that new hire would be for Spanish at HES. We've been saying that for year, years. I, I moved to Hatfield when I think I was in eighth grade and I'd already had five years of Spanish. And, yes. and, and I graduated a long time ago. <laughs> it was not recently. So this has been happening in other districts for decades. Indeed. 
Right. And so yeah. we would like to add a Spanish teacher to the elementary school. Yeah, great. Um, the other thing we'd look to, to add in, uh, when we look across the course opportunities at all the neighboring um, secondary schools, the place where, uh, one, I wanna just say, my hat is off to whoever schedules and how they manage and to our teaching staff for offering the diversity of classes that they do at Smith Academy. It is it, far better than what I went to school with and I was in a massively big school. And, but the, the gap in the course offering is in performing arts. And I, and it was not a surprise to me when I looked at um, the places where we lose students are primarily ninth, sixth, and seventh. And the seventh, half of the seventh graders we lost, we lost to performing arts schools. Yeah. Um, more than half of the ninth graders we lost, we lost to Vogue. We get losing to Vogue. Like it's a, we've always lost a vote. It, yeah, it's not even really a loss, right? It's, it's an opportunity loss, right? for our students that right. we're lucky they have to. Yeah. But there is there isn't the same balance of opportunity for kids who might have performing art interests, um, and we think that there's a rich tradition with performances within Smith Academy we could build on, and so we're looking to invest. It would be part time staff for chorus, theater slash TV. Some of this would be some depending on staffing, what we can find, who we can find to hire, that would be amazing. Um, but we think that's a gap we should fill. Um, we also are watching um, the continued needs for social emotional learning, some of it particularly coming out of the COVID era. Um, and we think another bang for the buck would be to have an on-staff school psychologist at the elementary school. We do have one at, at Smith Academy. Um, we already spend some funds on outsourcing for this. So there would be some offset there. So it wouldn't be 100% total new cost. Um, but imagine we could spend a little bit more and have a full-time staff person available. Um, in addition, we're looking for some SEL training for uh, preschool through sixth grade teachers. Um, that's part of a long-term savings plan. What is SEL? Oh, social, social emotional, emotional learning. learning. Sorry. Um, so the some of the work they're doing right now is is really helping staff work with all students in a way that they're able to probably have fewer students who need individualized plans, which is a, a cost in the long run. Um, and as a district, we have a higher percentage of students on plans. So um, helping classroom teachers grow their skill sets so that we need fewer kids on plans is a bonus and training is part of that. Um, and then the other um, similar to sort of the loss of attrition over time, like chorus and more foreign language, we really would like to bring back some middle school sports. So right now we're working hand in hand with the rec department to make sure that we're offering everything we can within the budget, but we'd like the small budget. Um, and then we're looking at the potential MIAA is actually looking at introducing esports and electronics. So gaming is actually a sport now. Um, and it's they compete at the college level and they're starting to introduce that at the high school level. And it feels like a very hand in hand opportunity with our programming that there might be kids. And it's not likely to take kids out of sports, but it probably is a great opportunity to find community for kids who might not have one today. So the budget is about thriving programs, partnering with teachers to stretch remaining competitive with the surrounding communities, maintaining our buildings, bringing in additional tuition-based students. Um, to that end, we've, we've put out outreach this week to a charter school that's closing in Chicopee that has around 250 students somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, we, we just need 10% of them to hit growth. <laughs> so we're looking at all avenues to find new students. Um, reducing our out-of-district expenses, encouraging residents to stay with us, um, and engaging teachers and staff to be excited about what they have here too. Um, because we know that they could make more elsewhere. Um, we just want to make sure that we remain the place they want to be and teach. Um, and then in putting together a budget, so really it's about we've built a plan that looks at 
a long-term success plan um, because we know that if we don't invest in our school and we see some of these trends continue, that there are some really long-term impacts to towns and there's fairly well-documented evidence around what happens if schools close or merge or move away. Um, it reflects on student achievement, it reflects on property values and town identity. So we're looking to invest before we come back and say, we, we don't have a better way to do this um, and we don't have a school here. So now is the time before we hit that point. So we really see um, our public schools, Hatfield Public Schools is the heart of Hatfield. So with that. Well played putting my daughter's picture in here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there she is. There she oh, is. There we go. Yeah. Know your audience. Exactly. <laughs> you symbolize the heart of Hatfield better than half the time. So um, because we know there's a lot going on and a lot of moving parts, there is a very healthy appendix in here to answer a lot of questions. And we can flip through that if that's helpful. So you have the district improvement plan. Which you Will this can, be available to town people? The district improvement plan is on the website. And we can make we can more of this. this. This whole deck could be available. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, <laughs> so can I just talk about this? Sorry. So the level service budget, as I understand it. Page six. Here. Thank you. Yep, that's where I am. Page that's six. It. It, that's $467,537. In new town spending, yes. In new, in new town, yes. In <laughs> new town, all this is in new town spending. Yes. And so. And with the investment to get Spanish, to get some performing arts, right. to get some middle school sports back, um, we're looking at 731. Does that include the programming stuff, the coding stuff? Yes. Okay. And and that was the that was the additional town investment of two hundred sixty four thousand three hundred dollars. Yes. Right. So, okay. Say that again, Daryl. The seven thirty one is is it? The seven thirty one okay. is cool. essentially two hundred sixty four thousand dollars more than the level the service level budget. Service. May I just to. Clarify and make it simpler for everybody. Last year, the budget was five point two million. The right. town portion. The town budget. portion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this year, the request is for five point nine. Well, five point town, nine. town portion town to, to add to add those additional services. Yes. I thought it was. I'm saying it that way because five, that's what people ultimately are going to vote on when no, they vote yeah. is going to be on the financial piece, and they need you know. 5.7 if we stay level yeah, level no, service the and then 5. Yeah, right. with the added service. Okay, sorry, I just need to okay. see it in my Well, you said 700. I just, you know, yeah, people no. for context need to hear what it was yeah. and what it's going to be. I I think I think it just kind of spells it out a little bit more. Right. That's all. We're saying the same thing just a different way. No, and that's good. It's good for me. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, yeah. Well, and yeah. You know, when once we get done with this process, we've got what another night of meeting with departments after this. Next week, yeah. right? Two more. Two more. Two more and nights. Next so Tuesday and Valentine's Day, Daryl. Nobody Valentine's tell Valentine's your spouse till the last minute oh, when you're walking out so, the door. <laughs> so, so, so once that's done, then Marlene, Marlene, who's been working on mm -hmm. on on the spreadsheet, in the spreadsheet, then we'll have a night. Yeah, then we use the magic board, board and yeah. yeah, and yeah, and then That's when we start getting the dry heat. Yeah. So <laughs> once once we put that that together, mm -hmm. then then we'll have an idea of you know what's of where we need to go with the budget, and and and. And the plan is to go, I think the plan is to go to town floor with essentially at least two different budgets. One which stays within whatever means we have for this year. And the next one would be for an override, you know, contingent if on contingent on an, on an override. override. 
So, could I make a comment? So, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I, I, I'm sure some of the questions are, are going to be answered in here that I'm about to, or not. I actually just wanted to make a comment. And the comment is, you guys have a lot of work ahead of you. you so you're, you're trying to retain the students we have. You're trying to get the students who live in Hatfield who currently don't come to school here. And you're trying to increase uh, or make, more, make attractive or, or additional attractions for the school of choice. So you guys have a big job ahead of you. Um, and I know the numbers have come down on all on all those things our our students out is probably flat but that that's a pretty that's a pretty high number and the school choice is down the however many kids from three or four <coughs> years ago and so just wanted to say that you know sometimes I ask the questions and, and everybody turns to me and I go I'm not trying to do a gotcha thing I support the schools I always have that's why I've been involved with them for so long but I do try to sometimes spell it out in a way that people who don't understand the, the lingo or, or the percentages versus a number. They, you know, what is 15% of whatever, right? It's like, okay, that means 20 kids. You know, so that's, that's my intent here. Um, I support the schools. I support what you're doing. <coughs> I just wanted to be clear that this wasn't a, you know, try to gotcha type thing, you know? Because people need to know, ultimately, people need to know what it's going to cost, right? I mean, that it, it's a lot of money over the last two years for, for the town budget, right? Um, 500000 last year, 700000 this year, r r roughly. So we're looking at a, a million dollars, $1.2 million over the last two fiscal years. Not saying it's not worth it. I'm not saying it's not important. But some people are going to say, well, what's next year? And what's the year after? Right. So, and I don't, you guys don't have a crystal ball unless you want to talk to that, but well, that's think, going to be, where does this end or does it end? Well, I think that's the point of why we put together a three year strategic plan right. to really take a look at how do we course correct some of this so that we don't come back every year right. and take a giant bite um, out of budget. So, you know, that big shift in school choice enrollment is substantial. Um, and that's really, I, to answer one of your questions, Brian, that I don't think we got to, there's a chart on the appendix, page 27. Okay. Yeah, thanks. The, if, as we look at our decline from last year to the current year, 81% of that is a, two things. It's the difference between a very large graduating class of 41 kids yeah, to, a, to, a capped, <laughs> right, to a capped number of preschoolers, because there's a yeah. limit to how many we can can have hold. Yeah, one to six graders. Yes, left. but it's the other piece of that. So there's 11 kid difference. Right. The other piece is our change in school choice enrollment. 81% of the difference between last year and this year are those two things alone. So we are disproportionately losing school choice students right now. So the level of kids going out is really flat. Would we like to get them back? Yes because as the population declines, that flat represents a bigger piece of, of the overall population, even though the number is steady. Um, yeah, well, so. in just the three years or so, it's like 40 kids since 2020 fiscal year. That, that's a lot. And, and I get it, There's a lot of them graduated. And, and, and that's part of what I was saying. That's, that's the, your charge, right? That, that's what you guys are sitting here saying. How do, we, how do we get them and more back? And, and, and I get it. So, yeah, and it's hard well, luck. You know, we're in a highly competitive market with all these schools. East Hampton just put a pile of money into their their schools, yeah. and every everybody's investing. I I always remember Greenfield, you know, when the school choice thing oh, started, that. and they virtually lost their school system until they decided to right. And didn't a Catholic school or parochial school close and pretty much. 20 something kids. I mean, that was early on in our yeah. school choice yeah. involvement, but I mean, that, that was huge for us. You know? Yeah. But staying, staying. You, oh, sorry. Yeah. Was just, do your choice out students are just choice out to public schools or yeah. that? Page 26. You can see where they go. And we can. Chris is good at knowing what yeah. we're going to ask. Huh? And we can compare them to our neighbors. So we, we asked like, where are our kids going? If they're not with us. Where are they? Yeah. 
Um, so what you see here going column by column oh. is the resident population for Hatfield, for Hadley and Northampton. The school choice out by percentage and number. And then those going to charter schools, book schools and the collaborative, which are all still considered public funded public mm -hmm. education, but all come at a higher cost. So yeah. the, the tuition per student at any one of those is going to be significantly greater than than our yeah. our budget, even with an increase. So, and they take their money with them. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can see the percent of those students. And then there's that combined. So everybody in public. And then there's no cost to town. But here's residents that are either going to private school and or homeschooled. When the there's a cost in your chapter 70. Correct. Yes. There's, yeah. there's a foundation impact. Yeah. Correct. But not, uh, and I, you know, and I'm not even. I, I would consider that an unlikely group to get back. That's what yeah. I think. I, I don't think it's realistic to think that we're going to get no everyone back. I mean, some people have made a choice to go to a private school. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Then that's what they're going to do. It's right. not it, uh, depending mm -hmm. on what we did. Yeah. Although we've learned some things about why that mm -hmm. we, you know, there's there's a reason we uh, made sure that we have aftercare that's provided by the school district. I mean. If we don't have aftercare, no, I think we have families that cannot manage. I think stuff. it's really sensible to to do what you're doing, which is to target some specific areas that we're going to try to yeah. make gains in those specific areas. I mean, we, we're we certainly not big enough to be the all things to all people school no. and just There's getting no better at things. everything. We can't get better at everything, mm -hmm. but we can target some small areas. And, yeah. and we don't need every student. We just need enough students. So right. I, I, that's a smart approach, you know, how to go about that. Part of our draw has always been to the smaller class size. Right. For, for, for that particular family or student or the school. Just and we maintain that, from. I think. Yeah. But right. we but we need to go after some other yeah. draws, you know, like yeah. what are yeah. our other draws other than small class sizes, which has always been there and still is there. Mm -hmm. so. and, and isn't it especially competitive at the elementary level? a little mm -hmm. more competitive in the middle, at the middle and high school mm -hmm. level. So um, just for those who are, are not looking at charts in front of them, I think it's worth knowing that the resident population that doesn't attend is exactly in line with what's going on at Hadley and what's going on in Northampton. So Hadley students are a little more likely to go to charter or folk schools. That kind of makes sense. There's one right there. Northampton students are more likely to go to private schools. Um, all of our districts have seen some recent upticks, um, but they all come at different times and for different reasons. Um, Hatfield had a bigger uptick 2008 to 2010 with students that were departing per resident side. So. Mm -hmm. Did we, 2008 was recession, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. We, we've actually been in a pretty good position not to give ancient history, but, you know, when Greenfield closed, we got a lot of those students. Yeah. When East Hampton was having an issue, we got a lot of those students. When Hoyle Catholic decided to leave Hoyoke and go to uh, Chickabee and then Granby or Granby and then Chickabee right. or whatever, yeah. we got a lot of those kids as they became freshmen, you know, because yeah. they left BS, Blessed Sacrament. And, and, and so we, we part of that, um, those different... Yeah issues yeah. happening were, were good for us, were good for us. The challenge in today's climate is that everybody is a little more aggressive about Correct. keeping those kids because everyone's facing the same population yep. issues. So everyone is hungry. So you've got to stand, you know, do something to stand. Point about Holyoke, it, and this is just what it appears to me anecdotally, we had a, several big families that came in with all their kids that are now aging out of Correct. the school. So you right. had you sort of had this group, a large group mm -hmm. of Holyoke kids that moved through, the, the last of which I think is graduating with Hadley Charlotte. So there, you know, there, it was a, it was a, they came as a group. And, and so we're yeah. looking to, to leverage where we have kids to grow more kids so that we I mean, do a couple of things. And I think it was ingenious that this, the school district is, you, you want to talk about long signs? Sure. So we're trying to be aggressive uh, about advertising. We're doing long signs uh, with um, all our, we've asked our school choice families to post a, sc a school choice sign in in their community. Uh, so the 
recognize uh, that we're here. Uh, yeah. We're asking our staff uh, who live in other communities to do the same thing. Uh, you know, we're trying to get a social media presence um, with our campaign, as well as uh, looking at different ways to uh, get it out. We did radio in the fall. Uh, we didn't really think we got a good return for our dollar there. Uh, so we're trying to be as aggressive as we can to find ways to get the message out that we have space available and we're still able to keep the character of Hatfield in terms of the small class sizes and the small community uh, that everybody values uh, and, and why they choose to come here. And part of the strategic plan is to make sure that we're fostering all of our school choice students, that we find ways to foster those families so that they get to know each other. Like, is there a chance to carpool? Is there like finding ways to help them build some identity and community mm -hmm. amongst that group mm -hmm. as well, um, that just supports their ability to come and stay. I think middle school athletics is a big part of this, mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. And chorus, you yeah. know, oh, uh, that too. the I academic mean, part, you, not yeah. almost anyway. You know, the academic part obviously is important, right? But it's always it's always those extras sure. that it's you know because some kids want to come to school because of the music or or the arts or sports Absolutely. or whatever it is, you know. And I know through the years we've we've had them, haven't had them, you know, for various things. The chorus. Um, I used to play the piano for the chorus teacher actually when Emily was there. But, anyways, um, you know, those things are important because you could draw not only the kids that are already here, but draw others to say, oh, that, that's great, you know, middle school yeah. chorus. We already have band, right? That's yeah. still going strong, so, yeah. Currently, I, I have to luck. update numbers, but I would say, you know, it might be worth to looking at more, you know, if there's a conversation going on about, you know, what do we do with the high school and the elementary school, you know, long term, to sort of look at the numbers, and I've looked at them not too, too recently, but at what the cost actually is to run an elementary only district mm -hmm. is significantly more expensive than what I think we're spending. It's a little hard to suss out what we're spending exactly, but I know what other people are spending to run elementary only districts, and they're significantly more expensive than than our whole district is like just to, if you look at the small towns around us that run elementary only right. districts, they're spending far more money per pupil than we are because you still need a superintendent. You still, all the administrator, right. you know, right. the administration still all needs to be there. Um, so it's, it is, how, it's not as cheap as you, as you can imagine it might be. Yeah. How, how do we do with, um, you know, college placements. So, and is that a selling point that we can market at, you know, that we, we have this many kids that are going to schools or be able to name that we had, you know, there's, I'm just curious if that's something you can use as a marketing tool or are we struggling there? I mean, I think all of the students that want to go to college have an opportunity to get there and get placed because of their education in Hatfield. Um, I, our numbers are stronger for the two-year programs uh, than the four-year programs, but that's just what their choices are. Uh, and um, it's definitely something we are taking a look at and trying to um, have get our students more interested in the different college options that they have. Um, you know, right from eighth grade on. Uh, so, you know, we started that this year, as a matter of fact, so that they they start to understand what college application process is really about. It's, it's really, it's not just in your junior year. You know, you've got to start thinking about different places that you want to go, um, how are you going to pay for it, um, what, what's the area of study that you have an interest in, and, and build your repertoire uh, because we have a very strong internship program now. Um, so a lot of our kids get to intern in the areas that they might, want to go to college for. And so, um, you know, that starts early. Uh, so we're doing a great job in that regard. Mm -hmm. I guess, I mean, if I was shopping for a school, you know, I had a seventh or eighth grader and was deciding maybe that I was going to choice somewhere, I would want to know, you know, how are the, how are the students from this district doing in terms of college placements? Right. And I, 
We, we have it's started so using the stats for both our graduation rate, which is phenomenally good, yeah. and our college, whether it's two or four year program entry, it's around 90% and the graduation mm -hmm. rate is over 95. So we are using that data in the marketing efforts that are going out now. Um, I think we have last year used some of the sense of like, here are some of the colleges right. students are right. choosing to attend. Um, and our kids are very competitive. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, one of the things uh, Dr. Driscoll and I have talked about is like, do we get more testimonials um, so that we can start profiling a little bit more of that, um, which can speak to what did you get? Like being able to do all of the things, right? One of the amazing things about Smith Academy is you don't have to pick just one thing to be. Um, you know, how did that set you up for success in college? What, like, just to be able to have students who are recent graduates and are about to graduate speak to some of those things so that incoming sixth and seventh graders have an opportunity to see that. Um, the other thing that we have um, adopted heartily this year is having opportunities where fifth and sixth graders go from the elementary school and have a chance to be a part of things going on at Smith Academy. So we know that we're losing kids in the shift, so they need to feel like they're part of our schools before that happens. So um, we're seeing, you know, sixth graders up at Smith Academy for fun stuff. Um, so they kind of catch that sense now. You know, my, my second grader is clear that he is a falcon. I used the term eagle eye the other day. He's like, no. <laughs> so, I mean, this is this is part of what we need to do to make sure that, that we have um, pre-K to 12. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks great. for the information. Thank you for the extra great time. Yeah. Yeah. No, it worked out great. Yeah, I actually look at you. Yep, went you one minute over. Hundred times. <laughs> Very good presentation. I, I do hope that we can have this available to. Uh, How would you like that and who needs to get it? So that can go online. This. On the website? I guess it would go to. Well, I thought Christy said it was online. The district improvement plan already is. This whole deck can be uh, available. Yeah. yeah, that would be great. You send it to me and or Karen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, that was Adam. great. Thank you, Adam. Good to see you. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> Thanks, Christy. Thanks, Michael. All right. <clears throat> My goodness, we're on time. This is <laughs> oh, only because you started. The schools early. They needed a lot of time, a lot of information. It was, it was mm -hmm. good presentation. Yeah. Okay, Marlene. All right. Let's do this quickly. Um, is everybody looking at Hatfield Cable TV budget? Yes. What, John wants more money? I got a pie. Forget it. Nope, oh, I got it. <laughs> Somehow. Yep, there it is. Yeah, John does not. Yeah, so this is, yeah, level, level, level services. And um, actually, I uh, earlier, well, this week, uh, end of last week, and, and this week looking at the enterprise fund, and we're anticipating, you know, additional revenue from Comcast if we can get that. Contract. Oh, right. What is yeah, up? That is happening. <laughs> Let's not take that side. Yeah, that's term, a whole but. different. Yeah, that'll take, a, okay, take about 15 minutes. So, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, his budget, and nothing, nothing's changing, obviously. Okay. And um, excellent. Yeah. However, there is an increase. We have seen an increase in, in telecommunications. The cost of um, the Comcast monthly invoice has increased. Um, but there's a decrease. On another line. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Six hundred. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna reduce that slightly. Okay. Level funded. Right. I'm good with that one. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, animal inspector. Next budget. Um, so there's the animal control officer and the animal inspector. Same same individual. Um, no changes there. Didn't we give him more money last year? We we did. We gave him additional money in in clothing and as everybody else. Um, Received a cost of living increase. 
Right. But yes, there was an increase in, in clothing. We, we, we are so lucky. I was just going to say, that is the best bargain. Oh my gosh. Thank yes. you, Scott Pomeroy, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So moving on, uh, if there's no other questions. No. Okay, Conservation Commission. And again, that is level services. Very level funded. Level funded. Okay. Do they have money in their budget when they have to get outside assistance? Uh, you know, like if they much. have a consultant. Yeah, like consultants. Consultant. I mean, because I mean, it's kind of hard to budget for because you don't know. Yeah, yeah, but planning board runs into this. All all these boards run in. I, I just so didn't. they they have fifteen hundred dollars in their budget for that. Okay. Um, but typically they, they didn't ask for any more though, right? No. So, not I mean, I yeah, yeah, for, yeah, good point though. Yeah. So that must be at least per, that must be enough for now. I mean, mm -hmm. they come back and say we. Yeah. Ran into this issue a couple times. And just... Well, that's what the planning board did, yeah. right? When right. They came back with a plan. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Have they filled that position yet? I don't think so. Right? The, the, assistant... the planning board? Actually, we've posted the position. Oh, and sorry. Um, sorry, I'm off topic. Yeah, we've posted the position, and uh, actually, there's resumes coming in from uh, students at UMass. Right. Students, yeah. Right up their alley, probably, right? Mm. So town hall, uh, town operations. hall operations, there there isn't a, any audit. change there. Um, oh, you were looking at audit? I'm, that's what came up first, okay. unless I went too far. Oh, yeah, I did. Sorry. No change there. Yeah, yeah. No change. change. Audit? Audit. A uh, little bit of an increase here. So... And that is just yeah, a contractual and, and that's, increase. That is contractual. And of course, so, you know, that's the uh, the general annual audit and also the OPEB report. Mm -hmm. That's an audit that is done separate from, I mean, we have no from choice our auditor. Right. Yeah. No use for that. <clears throat> um, Insurance. Insurance, yes, definitely an increase. Um, and and I met with our our insurance representative. Um, I am considering uh, bidding the services for the next year. However, um, the increase is is due to the number of workers' comp claims, and we we've had some you know an increase in claims at the school. Um, so actually, school superintendent and I've invited the principals to to join um, a, a meeting, a virtual meeting with uh, a representative from Maya, risk claims manager, to look at uh, some possible models, you know, that could be used in the school system and shared with the teachers to handle situations. You know, to yeah. Mitigate there, primarily at the elementary and... school, but you know, at the at the high school as well. But there's been a big increase in claims the last few years, and that's what's driving the, the cost of the insurance. So this general li oh, this is liability. Mm. So this is everything: property, a property, yeah, property, public safety, and general liability, workers' comp. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Usually, workers' comp, at least in my world, is separated. It's a separate policy from general liability. But yeah, it's it's all lumped together. Um, it's all expensive. So you know, this Maya is proposing a five percent rate increase, which seems like a reasonable rate increase. Which is ten thousand. What does proposing mean versus increasing at five percent? Well, I, I, is it negotiable? No. <laughs> you, know, no. you could go out to no, bid probably. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, but I, you know. Yes, we, we, we could. Increase your deductibles. Right. Cool. You can play yeah. around with that. Yeah. Give you four. So, you know, just so everybody knows, we are adding another building. So the um, structure that's going up on Elm Court, 
that will be added to our insurance um, coverage. So, you know, there'll be an additional cost for that. We're adding more vehicles too every year. Yep. We, and, and, you know, occasionally we take a vehicle off the road, but we're, we're putting more vehicles on than we are taking off. So our fleet schedule is quite lengthy. Yeah. Um, I, I'd have to talk to Phil about that. I have asked him before. Well, I think the they lease program to, has made it more affordable. So right, right. We're not holding people back till their vehicle doesn't run anymore. Yeah. Right. So you they're know? yeah. So, right. if you're so they're getting newer. Ve they're getting newer vehicles. But if you're getting additional vehicles, then right. Then where where is that coming from? Where where's the increase in need for more? Because the older ones are coming off the. Right. Am, am I not answering your question? Marlene is saying it's a total number increase it's, in the number of vehicles. Right. You're not getting rid of them. So, so you're actually financing them. I mean, you're not, yes. so you're not giving them back. So you're keeping it, them. Yes. You're keeping right. them registered. We maintain them insured. Them. So why why the increase in number? Well, it's probably various departments. I, I mean, we well, got. You know, well, yeah. for example, we just yeah. we just took you know, you a, a right. van. You get a you know we had we got something new for fire, right? Oh yes, yeah. we have yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's not just yeah. you know. But why aren't more coming off? I think is what you're saying. You have another police cruiser that you didn't always have, right? Right, and we just took one off tonight. Yeah. Well, and that's also surplus. interesting. We get a new, you know, I'll just use a DPW truck, and then they take the old one and repurpose it for the guys running around in the summer. So right. it doesn't really. Right. Or they, in the past, they've given them to the school department. They've used, right. you know, right. This the um. You know, the maintenance staff there has used them for yeah. trash mm -hmm. runs and things. So Multi-use. We sort of yeah. repurpose them sometimes. Right. We tend to use them until they absolutely right. die. We mm -hmm. find a purpose. Sometimes it costs yeah. too much to get it back to where you really need it for. So, therefore, it's okay yeah. to just use as a round, a round town type vehicle versus mm -hmm. whatever parts yeah. might have needed to nice go into to it. That, that number of. Yeah. I think yeah. that's fair. That's a, Yeah. So the inventory also the inventory also includes equipment that has to have a plate like a trailer, right. you know, it has to have a plate. It's not yeah. just we got lots of vehicles. Right. So we, we have got equipment. A new trailer for the excavator, for right? Right. Yeah. 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 Was yeah. it a bent rod? Oh, yeah. Get me going. <laughs> okay. okay. Next one is everybody looking at legal. Legal. Yeah, so that's that's level. Next is the select board's Ooh. budget. And no money for what are we you. spending? <laughs> Not gonna matter to me. <laughs> We, level we have that right? $25 oh, emergency What's that? fund. So I, What's that five? Uh, what do you throw under us? Yeah, so I've the emergency fund, yeah, it's $25. That hasn't changed in years. Yeah. Um, I have added a thousand dollars. Yeah. I've added a thousand dollars for advertising and publishing okay. because you know there are, you know things we advertise for. regulations yep. that require oh, right, support. Right, I mean, right, I've right, typically right. taken them out of my operating budget, um, but it is a, a select board expense. Okay. What is the business travel under the select board? Uh, that that is for a trip type, not a no, or what? no, but there there have That's, been past boards that would go to like the trade shows that they have right. in Boston and things like that, right? Or, know, or or travel wherever. to meetings, past yeah, like, select board members or have yeah. gone to meetings and then put in for mileage, or there's a registration fee, you know, for yeah. a meeting. It seem like we've been doing that for years. Um, haven't seen some have done it more this, than others, I'm not on the, yeah, not, this, not the three, board. Right. this is my fourth year back on the board right. and we, well right. you'll get it back next year when we do the <laughs> transfer somebody stuff. Might want, yeah somebody might watch might be something yeah, good you know, know. I mean, yeah. but yeah i'm just curious okay. technology any questions no no uh, technology uh actually this i believe is a reduction oh, nice. yes so because like this year this year we're um, migrating to the cloud and so you know there's a significant expense associated with that. Yeah.
So we, you know, it's yeah, taken a long yeah, time. I <laughs> yeah, I just did it as well. Yeah, yeah it, um, it, was, it was a problem getting all the hardware, the wait time. So, you know, we started this process in July and at the time didn't anticipate there being a, a delay. And then I was told in, I believe it was August or September, that we're looking at after the first of the year. So they have been working on that the beginning of the year. <clears throat> so that was so just a, a that was a one-time expense. Right, yeah. right. So we will be yes. replacing out, you know, uh, PCs yeah. as we do every year. Um, and then this includes the support services as well. And then software licensing. Okay. Well, that's great. Yeah. Uh, the next one is, if you're looking at it, uh, mm -hmm. my expense and in, in, in staff wages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a slight increase there um, for merit increases yeah. that I feel very strongly about. Um, Seems fair. So I have um, slightly basically level funded. So I have so reduced the, the part-time temporary wages line, and I'm right. comfortable yes. with that right now. Um, advertising legal notices—you'll see I reduced that because I moved money to the select board's right. budget. Okay. Um, so that's okay. that is a very minor budget. Okay. And, and that covers yeah. Great. all the budgets that I, mm -hmm. I You guys have any questions about any of those? Mm -hmm. um, just uh, I'll mention that we are expecting to get an increase in health insurance this year. You know, it's we haven't seen an increase. Right. How much um, do you know? A few years. Yes, mm -hmm. we're looking at a six percent increase in health insurance. <laughs> Killing it in health insurance. Looks at about thirty six thousand. Yeah. How many years in a row? What, how about thirty six thousand. Is it about? I mean, yeah, we've done well. Five fifty. Five hundred fifty thousand. We had new years with zero. Correct. 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 That's Correct. not even like a thing. Really. And out, out in the real world, it's yeah. like ten, fifteen percent every yeah. year. Yeah. We knew it was coming. Some eventually, yeah, it always does. Gonna, it's not gonna stay flat. Ed, did you have any questions? Well, right now, if I got this right in my head, we're looking at probably 1.2 or 1.4 million more than last year, minus two and a half, which is 250. And then we got 600,000 of free cash this year. So, but we don't use all the free cash, so yeah, free don't cash use is it on not the budget. been certified. But I thought I was, we were only had three hundred thousand. Well, I, I had a conversation with the accountant last week. She was here. Um, Schedule A year-end balance sheet yeah. has been submitted in its entirety. Um, it had had been submitted a little earlier. Uh, Division of Local Services had some questions, and so they didn't, you know, turn it around. Um, too quick for the accountant, but anyway, as of, of last week, um, it's estimated at six hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. I it's thought we'd hear by that now that, that operating budget. No, well, we did last year, but, but that was temporary. That was a one-time, right? One-time mm -hmm. deal. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm. That's well, what you're I'm not thinking. Enough to do what we're about you know, there, right? right? Even if you wanted to buy a year out, you don't have enough money to do that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really. You could do some things, I guess, if you wanted to. <coughs> but you gotta see what capital plan's gonna bring forward too, right? Yeah. Yeah, well there's two school parking lots and a roof, and then the various and sundry stuff that comes along all the time, for sure, right? Like the fire department equipment, we probably have turnout gear or Chromebooks or yeah, yeah, that's kind of that stuff kind of comes all the time. So, well, and did I understand right excited. that the roof that there's not going to be a school building assistance program this year? We were kind of counting on that. There's not going to be. 
We were a year away from right, I remember being able to do yeah. that, right? And so we waited. And they have so many requests in that they put a moratorium on the asks and they changed the timeline to like 28 years. So it, hmm. it's not available next year. Yeah, they probably have so many asks because they adjusted the phase. Yes. Yeah. So, and, and the process went. Of course. Well, that's too bad. I didn't know that. Yeah. That oh, is. doubled. Wow. But on the bright side, we did get some million for the finish five and ten. So I mean, that's that's a positive, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we're, are we going to have to do any? Are we all set with that project and money wise? You don't have to get any more money. <laughs> the best of my knowledge, yeah. Right. We're we're so good. We're good. Holes in the ground, yeah, water gets yeah, more expensive. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, that was a lot of ground to cover tonight. And so we're meeting next yeah. week? The 14th. Because, okay. And we're not meeting the week of the 20th. I think, Daryl, you are away. Yeah, that's the uh, school yeah. vacation so week. So we're meeting the 14th and the 28th. And and I am now going to be away. I'll I have a meeting on the 28th, so I won't be here. But doesn't mean you guys can't meet. But I... Is the, we'll, so is next week the last of these, and then the twenty eighth would begin the the twenty eighth. We're meeting with all the uh, financial offices. Um, oh, okay, the front. Yeah, yeah. The accountant, That's why I didn't see treasurer, anything. collector, yeah. okay. and right. assessors. The sure. last meeting. I, I only asked because if Daryl right, wasn't going to be here, we're going to start doing the whole That's correct. big budget. Yeah. You know, next week is building inspector, town clerk, assessors. Um, why Assessors, I thought, right? was the last. Oh, then we switched so it around. Like? Fire is we're gonna have fire oh, coming next week. Oh, it's next week. We're gonna have <laughs> it in next. I gotta need. Yeah, I'll need a new agenda. So the ones that are on the twenty eighth are now gonna be the fourteenth. We change. Yeah, it's changed. Okay. It's it's interesting. Um, there's a theme going on here. I don't know if anyone else has noticed it, but and it really relates to um, master planning which is that every new dwelling built in town can't be 55 and over, apparently. Um, if you want to maintain kids in your school, have people to volunteer for the ambulance, you, know, you know, like all these things are related to the yes. fact that Good we're point. aging mm -hmm. and that it's hard to live here and expensive mm -hmm. and we're not making it any easier for young people to live here. So I, we, we're sort of a victim of our own success, right? Because we all love it here. We don't want to leave. And so right. that's why we're running out of kids because well, people are sitting, look at all of us here at the table. None of us have kids in the school system anymore, but we're all still staying here. You know, well, yeah. well, you're getting there. Hey, I got, <laughs> I, I got grandkids. He's the having them. The other extreme. John's the other extreme. Our zoning has made it such that congregate yeah. living, you know, is easier to do. So, you know, like yeah, I hope, across the street and the Elm Street, everything is 55 and over. I hope master you know, plan addresses that because I think we overdid that in 2000 to to the town's detriment. But, 20, you know, but 23 years later, right? It, hindsight's right, of uh, course. Uh, oh, off yeah, in of course. 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Well, I mean, I think you always do the best at the time at you're the doing time. it no, and then no. now you we we do have to take a look at some right. of those things that you know it, well especially in the center of town right i mean closer to the schools and the services right. you, you'd you'd like to have more younger people moving into that yep. area where you can serve them more easily you know mm -hmm. right that's where the frontage what went to 200 and some people were saying you might have to make it smaller to allow more houses to be built Oh yeah, in, in in the master plan in 2000, that we had to take that out because we knew we weren't going to be able to get that through. But but somehow it would be good if they could address some of that so that we can attract some <coughs> some you know younger younger families with children. It would be helpful for the school. More houses for the grandkids, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, yeah. If you want people who grow up here to live here, yeah, right. they have to have somewhere to live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. 
I always like to talk about when I was on the board last time, there was a statistic that came out that, and I've, I've, always, I've always bragged about it because it is something to be proud of, but it's that people who live in Hatfield at the time, and I, I'm assuming we're still in the running, have lived here longer than any other town in the Commonwealth, which is, that's a real, that's something to brag about, right? We, we love it here. There's no reason to leave. It's a great place. But it's also got a downside because there isn't that turnover. You aren't seeing, you know, pe we, people generally want to stay here. I want to stay here. I'm not retiring somewhere else. That means my nice family home is not going to put kids in the school system, hopefully for, you know, many years. I'm hoping to live a long time. Well, and so our, and going uh, along those lines, Diana, back to our earlier conversation with the school committee and, and the superintendent. I mean, we moved here mm -hmm. for the school system in right, 1999 yeah. because school of choice didn't exist. Right. So, so now you can live somewhere else right. for perhaps less cost of living, but get the education and here, hopefully, but anywhere. So it, it and it, you know, again, it's all those Okay. Consequences that have unintended consequences oh, okay. that happen with a good plan in the beginning, and then as it unfolds, I was just doing some research before our meeting tonight, and that's exactly what they talked about: the unintended consequences of small four small rural districts when something happens, you know, with the numbers. Right. And you it's, can see those playing out. You know, like we're not the tip of the iceberg here. Right. You can see those playing out in more rural, right, regional districts in this area, right. The con you, you know, you can see what's happening, yeah. right? You know, and how wildly inaccurate population <laughs> estimates were yep. uh, when they were done under the old school building assistance program. Right? You know, like the, they're just obviously inaccurate now, in hindsight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, building lots are are so expensive here that people who buy them aren't going to put just. We're not building capes anymore. We don't build just regular colonials or capes or ranches. You know. We're building beautiful, large homes, but it's just unaffordable for the average family. With that young being family, said, the, the, the average. With the that, has with that being said, make a motion to adjourn. Second. A motion made and second. We need further talking. discussion. No. I, Aye. I I thought we were looking at nine o'clock. Thanks, John. Yeah, this is great.